Brakatia Hawa, Brakatia Oshai, Brakatia Hawa, Brakatia Oshai, Brakatia Hawa, Brakatia Hawa, Bashim, Yahushai, Bahashim, Racha Kudash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which are well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the priest Shaman, this week's topic is going to be entitled The Wells Dried Up and Things Are Tight. Or getting tighter. And the inspiration for this comes from the fact that if you've, you've been, unless you've been living under a rock somewhere, you notice that the, the price of everything is going up. The, and the gas prices doesn't just mean gas is going up. It's a trickling effect. Because if gas goes up, then the fuel to transport goods goes up. If the fuel to transport goods go up, then the price of goods have to go up. And with the price of goods going up, but not the increase in wages, you're going to have people budgeting more, um, less spending, less money velocity going on, which is the exchange of dollars. And what that's going to cause is, um, I don't want to say stagflation, but what pretty much is happening is the price of goods are going up. But people are holding back their money to spend and put money into the economy because they just don't have it. A lot of people are highly leveraged with, with debt. And the bills are just stressing people out. And I was watching this guy, Value Tamen, he's talking about the recession that might happen, which is uh, back-to-back quarters of, uh, I believe, um, S&P 500 being down 20% for two quarters. It's technically a recession. Or I'm sorry, that's a bear market. But he said expect both market crashes and, and, and a bear market. See what's happened when we was on the President Trump, which President Trump was a fucking goat, man. <laughs> if he was make if he wasn't making money on the Trump man, you something's wrong with you, man. That dude was putting mad money in the economy, you know? So it was lit under him. Everybody was out there spending. Um stock market was up. Um Unemployment was down, gas was cheap, so the economy was booming, right? And he was fucking with the other nations, so, you know, we thought war was going to... It just, we just, you know, personally, I thought everything aligned, like, because, you know, once he, when um, peace and safety and sudden destruction, because everybody felt safe, everybody was doing great, all that. But what that caused was, and this guy breaks it down in the value attainment, it's it, it's very misleading because you have people that don't know what they were doing making money. You had 19-year-old becoming crypto millionaires. It was a lot of fraud. You had people getting paid high wages because of the whole COVID situation. People were desperate for work, so they were hiring people that were underqualified. All right. Um, you had asset inflation because with Fed rates down, the rates on like the return on your investment, you have big money. We're talking about the billionaires. They need a return on the investment. And if interest rates are going down, then their money is just sitting there and it's depreciating. So they were putting their money into riskier assets such as stocks and real estate, which caused a bubble in these asset prices, meaning they were going far above what they were valued. Now, Joe Biden got up in there and it's been complete shit since, man. Since 2021, everything's been down. People are suffering, which we love it. You know, we love to see these people suffer. But brothers are also going through it. And the Fed rates are going up. Now, with the Fed rates going up, you know, people, are, again, the whales, these are the ones that control a lot of things, a lot of the assets, taking their money out of that and put it into something more secured now since they could get a higher yield um, on their investment. So you're seeing things coming back down to earth, which is leading to a recession. You're going to see companies that are overbought, overpriced going down. You're going to see a lot of businesses shut down. Um, a lot of people get laid off. Um... Now, as this guy was mentioning in the, in the video, there are opportunities there to make bread, but only a finite amount of people are going to profit off of this situation. You see, because most people right now don't even have cash. They had their money in some sort of asset, whether it's crypto, stocks, real estate, and their money is going down, tanking, you see? So, shit is going to get real out here. It's getting bad out here. It's very hard for people to make bread in this economy and the price of everything keeps going up with this increase in the oil prices, which is crazy because right now in Libya, 
you know, oil is cheaper than water. You know, guys over there filling their tanks up for like a dollar something. But over here, in the United States in particular, gas is increasing. Why? Because, you know, this guy comes in, he shuts down tons of oil refineries because the United States was the number one export of oil under the Trump administration. Now, it's like number four. Letting you know that what? America had its own oil, but this whole crisis is orchestrated. It's self-induced. They want you people to suffer. See? And this guy is talking about, well, the feds are talking about bringing down the wages. So you got people losing their shit. You got these modern women out here, broke as hell. They losing their shit. They on goddamn day naps trying to find a brunch buddy. <laughs> Some nigga that's going to take them out to eat. And it's just complete chaos. It, things are only going to get worse, man. This is just the beginning of great sorrows. Now, with enough of that. Please ask these 12 and 4. Let's get into these scriptures. It says, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. Hold on. Let me uh, read verse 3. Ecclesiastes 12 and 3. In a day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease. From grinding. So the grinding is going to cease. We saw this take place during the lockdowns, which was also manufactured. Now we've seen it take place again in the form of these businesses. Under these tight ass margins, what most bars and a lot of companies they operate on the tight margins. What do I mean? Their margins of operations, all right. In other words, a lot of these places don't have six months supply of cash to keep the business going in case things were to slow down. You see what I'm saying? They're not, you know, their margins are tight, meaning they got to make the money this month or two. Because you know, one brother he's in business and he was saying, look. If you have one bad month, that shit could set you back for like six months before you recover. So imagine going six months with slow business. You're going to hurt. You can't keep it. Your margins are too tight. And it's going to cause a lot of these companies. And we see it in now. Supermarkets around your area. You might see it. I've seen it in my area. Closing down. Business that's been up for years. Because people ain't spending. They don't got it, man. You know, if you do the app-based jobs or whatever, a job involving tips, you might see people not tipping as much. People are looking out for them own selves because shit is getting tight, man. People canceling their gym subscriptions, canceling their HBO Maxes, their Netflix. People are canceling shit. Nobody want to spend because things are getting tighter. The well is dried up, you know? And again, this is all causing the rippling effect. It says, that a day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few, because they are few. And they that look out of the windows be darkened. So, like the guy was saying in the value tainment video, this is he's he experienced this, he's experienced something similar back in 08, You know, um, when the housing bubble crashed and things get hard on for people. You know, and I guarantee you that most people that are watching this videos, the brothers that are watching this videos, you have noticed things are getting tighter. So that financial demon is not just riding us, it's riding everybody in America right now. Why? Because the so-called white man is the devil. You know, he gets off on people suffering and ultimately the agenda is, you know, push you back onto relying onto the government. You see? They 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 had people in 2020 making so much money not working that they didn't want to go back to work. You see? They didn't want to go back to work. People like, man, I could come back unemployed. I don't want to go back to work. I could just get a check from the government. Now, whether you took out a PPP loan or you took out a loan or you were enjoying all that surplus and goodness that was coming in under that Trump time, now you got to get back out there and try to hustle and find a job. But guess what? Now they're not taking anybody. You see? Now companies are going to be like, nah, look, man, our budget is tight. We need the best qualified people. And the ones that are underqualified, they're cutting their ass. As he mentioned in the video. This is a great video to watch, brothers. You should check it out. You know? Because there's a lot of fear right now in the atmosphere. There's a lot of fear right now in the fi financial industries, man. As the stock market keeps tanking. You know, real estate bubbles going back down. People were paying high-ass prices to get homes. It was a super buyer's market. Why not? The interest rates were low as hell. Now, the price of your house is going down. You might notice this. If you own a home, you notice... Damn, the value of my crib is starting to tank. See? It says, and the doors shall be shut in the streets 
when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the birds, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. So there's going to come a, um, a something even probably worse than what we saw in 2020. People just shutting down because they can't afford to, to operate their business because things are tight right now. You know? And it says the daughters of music has been brought low. That's going into something a little bit different, talking about, you know, just the complete decrease in quality of music and the degeneracy that the music you see in today. But right now we just want to stay on topic. Now, this is Revelation 6 and 6. And it says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat. For a penny, the apostle Elder Tahal was breaking this down. Brothers are breaking this down after camp, go, going into a day's pay. And three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou heard not the oil and the wine. Now, this scripture is dealing with inflation. You know, inflation. You're doing far more work as time has progressed for far less wages, for far less pay. You know, you know, back in the 40s, let's say we were back in like, let's say 1940s, 1950s. If I'd have bought baseball cards with my money and you'd have just kept your money in dollars, I would have more value in cash than you. You have baseball cards being worth more than dollars, man. Why? Because they're scarcity. See, what happens with the U.S. The U.S. dollar, all right, is tied to labor, right? It's tied to labor. The reason you don't throw $100 out the window is because it's tied to your labor. You have to typically work to earn that $100. Now, what happens... When you're increasing dollars, but you're not increasing labor. You see what I'm saying? The labor is not being increased in the United States economy, but the numbers of dollars are increasing. What that starts to do is starts to devalue the dollar. So adjusted for inflation, you can look this up. Adjusted for inflation, if you're not making more than $24 an hour, then you're you're working less than minimum wage, which most people today are working less than minimum wage, but they don't know that. You see, minimum wage is a complete scam. Minimum wage doesn't solve shit. Why? Let's look at it. Let's look at it from this. Let's look at it like this, right? You're a small business owner, right? And you have your employees. When minimum wage goes up, you have to pay your employees more. You can't afford it because you're a small business. You see, the major corporations like your Costco's, your BJ's, your Kmart, or your Walmart's, they could afford minimum wage going up because they could increase the price of their goods. You as a small owner, you can't do that because you could lose your business. People will stop coming in and just go back to those bigger guys because they. what, what happens is the small guy, he, it costs him more. So let's say, let's, say you have like a, um, let's say you have like a dish soap, right? And wages went up, right? Minimum wage went up. You have to pay your employees more, right? Costco could afford to raise their shit by 20 cents. But you, you probably have to raise their shit by 30 or 40 cents or 50 cents just to stay afloat. You basically, since you're a smaller guy and you don't operate on the mass of products that they do, you have to raise the price of your goods or whatever. You might be selling more than those big corporations. And that little small difference equates to less customers, Right? That's how come when Walmart comes in a town, people say, damn, my small business is going to be destroyed because I can't keep up with a Walmart. Now, you might have the typical town go where I say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead to support my small business. But most people will just say, fuck it, I'm going to Walmart. It's cheaper. I get more bang for my buck. So as minimum wage goes up, all that's doing is just wiping out the middle class. And that's really the goal right now. <laughs> wiping out all the middle class and the small business owners, man. And it's been starting since 2020. You know? Because the scripture says it's going to be poor and rich. And if you have money, your greatest enemy is the man right below you. So they're trying to wipe out that entire middle class, man. You see? Because at the end of the day, the scripture says money is in the fence. And if you have your little own small practices, your own little business, when that RFID microchip comes around, all right, you could, as a small business, say, we will still take cash. But they don't want that. They don't want these type of people around. They want major corporations that they own and control. So when this thing comes into play, it's very easy to say, look, chips only. You see, there won't be any small guy around there to stand up. And it's a very gradual process to the so-called white man. But guess what? He's a calculated devil. 
But pursuant to the book of Revelations 3 and 18, we have the eye salve of the scriptures, really, to see through the darkness, to see through his bullshit and BS and see his real agenda. And break it down according to the spirit of the Lord. How about Shim Shai? You see, it says a measure of wheat for a penny and the price of measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, what's the oil and the wine? The word. You see? So, the scripture is dealing with the inflation that's going on. Okay? The valuing of this fiat currency. Okay? Because the dollar is not, again, it's not, it's tied to labor, but it's not associated with anything of intrinsic value, like, let's say, gold. You see? Because gold acted as a regulator because gold is only a limited supply of gold. See, when the United States dollar was tied to gold, you couldn't just print it. Because you can't make gold out of thin air. See? Now they've gone so far as making most of the money digital. Only 18% of the cash, United States cash, is actually in tangible dollars. Because you have the U.S. Treasury, which prints dollars. And then you have the Federal Reserve, which is just issuing out more and more digital currency. Into the economy, man. The goal ultimately being to crash this US dollar, all right? Crash the entire world's economy and then come up with a new alternative, okay? Which is going to be um, a cryptocurrency regulated by the government, all right? That is going to be tied to your biometric um, device, which is the chip, okay? They could use a cyber attack to introduce a chip, but everything is going to. Um, it's going to be an amalgamation of different things that's going to ultimately conclude to the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. That's what's going to be used to try to trade, sell, do so, any sorts of commerce. All right. They're already trying to create, put chips in certain things, certain assets like your car, your bike or whatever. That way that if somebody, let's say, rob your bike, there's a chip in it and it's going to be tied to you. So they're trying to, it's called transhumanism. They're trying to tie everything in with technology. You know? Now, this is the book of James 5 and 1. It says, Go to now, ye rich men, and weep. And how? For your miseries that shall come upon you. And you have a lot of rich men weeping right now. Because the average people do feel it. But guess what? You have these billionaire hedge funds that they go under. They're rich. They are howling too because of what's going on, man. So don't think they don't only feel it. And this guy mentioned it. In this video, when he was on the um, when he got picked up by Morgan Stanley, right? How you had these fund managers that were, you know, billionaires, always just managing um, money but playing golf. When shit hit the fan, they didn't know what the hell to do, and they went from billions to millions to ultimately hundreds of thousands to tens of thousands. They lost a lot, and these things happen. You know, watch the movie Fun with Dick and Jane, Drew Jim Carrey. Look up Enron, you know? Look up the Lehman Brothers. See? 2008, nobody thought Lehman Brothers was going to go under, but guess what? They went bankrupt. So no, no company is too big to fail. So these whales could weep and howl too. When I say whales, I'm talking about the ones that control the majority of these FRNs. It says your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. Now, when you look up here, cankered, all right, you see here to rust over, covered with rust. Now, we know gold and silver don't rust. It's not like iron. Gold and silver doesn't oxidize. So what does it mean your gold and your silver is cankered? It's talking about this funny money we use. You see? It's devalued. Gold and silver never lose their value. But this, this FRN, this denarius reincarnated, okay, has lost its value and power, okay? So people don't know what to do, you know? People don't like, damn, can I sit in cash? But if I sit in cash, um, I'm experiencing negative interest, okay? What do, I, what, what do I mean by negative interest on your money? Most of us, if you put your money in a checking account or you have checking accounts, there's a fee for that, you know? There's money being taken out. Your bank charges you. Savings ain't bringing back nothing much. I mean, actually, um, your savings account should be starting to go up. The APY is starting to go up since the feds are increasing the rates. Okay? It says, And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. 
So it's a total witness against this man that his funny money system was devious and wicked. It says, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped to treasures together for the last days. And all this white, the so-called white man, he's gathering all these riches, gathering all these, um, he's heaping everything up onto himself. Eventually, he wants to heap people up onto himself by, again, putting that chip in you. But the gold and the treasures and all that he's collecting, all right, is really for us. I'm going to prove that. Let me see if I can find that scripture in the book of um, Pro uh, Proverbs 13 and 22. It says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So the wealth of the sinner, so-called white man, the elites, is laid up for the just. So all these all these gold, everything that they're gonna that they're hoarding up, ultimately they hoard it up because they want a World War Three scenario, um, which they're gonna get. And they want the missiles to destroy the majority of the population, which they will get. And they plan, too, with having all the finite resources, because they plan to survive the nuclear destruction, all right, r rule the next generation because they have all the resources and everything. But what they don't know is when they're getting ready to come out those bunkers or those space station with world domination in mind and now having all the world's resources to a, um, with a with a finite amount of people, they could definitely control them easy and such. But guess what? <laughs> We're gonna be yanking them out them stations and ships. Lord willing, we are the elect. Because the scripture says, "Though you dig into hell, or go up to heaven, we gonna snatch your ass." See, actually, let me get it right. Let me get it right. Um, Amos. Amos 9 and 2, though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. And we're the hand of the Lord. Power. He's a prince of the power. You know, though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. See, so that's some space stations. Like you have that movie Elysium, which Elysium goes back to Greek mythology. When you had passed away, you had three places you could go. You had Hades, which was what they call hell, all right, which is a myth. You had, I forgot the middle one, but it was sort of like Earth, all right? And then you had Elysium, which was like heaven, all right? So they made a movie called Elysium where the very elites, that was their heaven. They could heal from any sort of disease and all that while the people on Earth were suffering and shit like that, you see? So we're going to snatch them out their Elysium. We're going to take them out of their heaven, all right? Their space stations, all right? And their rulership. Now, I'm going to jump over here to Ecclesiastes. 11 and 25, it says, In the day of prosperity, there's a forgetfulness of affliction. Um, and when things were going good in that prosperity era, people weren't even thinking about shit going sour. They were just thinking about, man, I'm making tens of thousands of dollars in the stock market. I'm flipping houses. Shit is going smooth, all right? There's no unemployment. Everybody's working. People were working two, three jobs just running up the bag. So they, everybody just, you know, they thought that was, it was, it was, a, it was lit. You know, people were being greedy. And in the day of affliction, there's no remembrance of prosperity. <laughs> so all that time that was going smooth, I mean, yeah, you might remember it when shit was smooth, but all that's on your mind right now is, damn, you said, fuck, man, I need money for gas, I need money for this, I need money for that. Your mind is just racing with all the different expenses you have to cover. You see? And it's only going to get worse. You know, the priest could rob here, put in the chat, showing a piece of some port. I don't know if it was um, what type of meat it was, maybe a lamb, maybe a steak, but shit was a piece of it going for like $40. And he said, everybody's going to turn vegan. And then I said, eventually, after vegan runs out, everybody's going to go to humans or cannibalism. And that's in the scriptures because it says in the book of Second Ezra's, um, 15 and 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Sword rep represents an instrument of destruction. They might hammer your shit down with a sledgehammer to get in, um, shoot your windows out with a shotgun. So the wealthy, they're going to have really more to worry about because if you broke in the projects, you know, you already broken shit, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know. People rather go to wealthy neighborhoods because they know they got shit stored up. 
but they're gonna destroy their houses. And first of all, a lot of people in projects don't got no damn houses, man. I know they call it housing or houses. There ain't no house, man. It's a bunch of bricks. The houses are your nicer areas, all right? Those are gonna be targeted. It says with the sword and spoil their goods. And they're gonna try to eat, man. Shit's gonna get too expensive. There's gonna be more shortages. It's gonna be just more chaos. And when my man General Salente, when people have nothing else to lose, they lose it. It says because of the lack of bread and there's not much. I think it's only three days supply of food in the grocery stores um, for like a population, man. This shit, it's just going to get ran through. Just like, again, in 2020 when people run around buying toilet paper and shit and it was gone. Lice all it was. It took quickly for that joint to run out. So imagine food, you know. Which is a necessity. Toilet paper is not a necessity for you to live. But imagine it's one of the things a necessity for you to live. You know, and you're already seeing violence going up. If you in certain neighborhoods, certain areas, you're already seeing violence going up. People robbing. Just the other day out here in the Bronx, you had that, that rapper, um, forgot his name, Vontae some shit. I might do a show on him. All right, they pretty much snatched his chain and killed him. Because, you know, robbed him. And I... <laughs> Some dude was breaking it down. I think he got killed with his own gun. So, niggas are robbing chains, robbing your headphones, you know, and this is in a first world country, you know? Third world countries, we already know that's the norm. People are really starving. But this, in this society over here, in a first world country, you know, shit, niggas <laughs> got to get money, I guess, to get chicken wings or some shit. But it, they, they resort to violence. And you're going to see the outside world is going to be just like prison. When all hell breaks loose, the outside world is going to be just like prison. In prison, there's a hierarchy. And everybody click up what they race to try to survive. It's survival of the fittest. And people do the most craziest things to survive. That's what you're going to see. But it's going to be the norm out here. All right? It says because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Because when there's no food, people lose their minds, man. When you gone days without eating, you don't think straight. You ever seen a Looney Tune cartoons when them niggas is on a when they on the desert, and the dude head start to look like a chicken, and the other friends start to be shaped like a, like a plate of some food or some shit like that. That's gonna really happen. You know, they are gonna be looking at you like, damn, that your arm is gonna look like a chicken wing to somebody. <laughs> you know. Your head is going to turn into a plate of noodles for the next man or whatever. They're just going to be hungry and lose their mind. For what? For great tribulation. The most are going to put great tribulation in the world, man. And these times are going to be trying out to these people. Not just uh, these people, but we're going to be going through it too, brothers. Just like how we feeling it now. Like our pockets are tight. You know, we're not going to be having a banquet when all hell breaks loose. But, you know, the Lord is going to take care of us. We're going to be able to eat. You know? Well, we're, again, we're the elect. Uh, 2nd Ezra 15 and 58 says they that be in the mountain shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh cannibalism cannibalism is going to be a thing here in America man you know and a lot of you women you proud ass women talking about I don't need a man and I'm an independent woman well look at those independent women over there in Ukraine when bombs start hitting the damn buildings where were they on the front lines nope they jumped right back in their role they ran into the kitchen became nurses again they, they jump right back in their feminine when shit break loose. You see? So that's going to be the same thing over here. It says, um, they that be in the mouth, oh, you fat woman that refused to exercise, you're going to be looking like a, a morsel. It's going to be crazy out in these streets, man. It says, they that be in the mountain shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. For very for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. Yep. And that's one thing that is worse than the sword, worse than any plague you could think of is famine, man. Because your body starts to eat away itself, your mind starts to go into some crazy state. It's a pretty frightening thing. But guess what? The Lord is a king of terrors. And the Lord is going to bring these terrors upon America to humble the hell out of America, man. See, so brothers over here, our advice, if you can stock up on goods, stock up just because, again, we read the scripture about inflation. You know, you might buy something today and then on the whole hell breaks loose, it might be triple or four times the price and you can't afford it. You know, 
Versus that are in the investing, the invest chat, we you know we looking at things just just in case. Because what 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 this devil like to do is he like to crash it, freak people out, drive down prices, and when there's blood in the streets, he's buying shit. That's how the Rockefellers got their wealth. That's how the Rothschilds did it, and they always do the cycle buy when there's blood in the street. So if if they on that tip, brothers already preparing there too, buying this, buying that while shit is low, just in case this devil want to flip things around. So you know there's different avenues to prepare yourself. Ultimately, the number one way to prepare yourself is have faith and believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and have him guide your steps. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Hakudash, the blinds of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone with True Well. Salutations to the whole elect out there, you Akim to Sadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. And Shalom, brothers. We're almost out of here. Shalom.